Stevenson passed away in 1850, but he left behind him a dynasty of talented engineers, and his family continued his remarkable work on the northern lighthouses. But they had a complex new problem. These phenomenal lenses were incredibly heavy. Turning them created enormous friction. Wheels and bearings had to be constantly replaced, and they could only rotate at slow speeds. It was nearly 70 years before a solution was put into practice. And I've come here to the National Maritime Museum of Ireland to see it for myself. Oh, wow. To come into an old church and be confronted with this. I have seen the light. Installed at Dublin's Bailey Lighthouse in 1902, this Fresnel lens weighs in at a whopping 10 tonnes. But that's not actually what I've come here to see. <laughs> it's quite hard to take this all in. I mean, you've obviously got the enormous lens on the top up here, but what you can't see in here, which is equally fascinating, is this, there's a giant donut-shaped trough or basin in here that's filled with mercury. And then the lens is attached to a great big donut-shaped ring, which then sits on top of that mercury. Nigel Teggin is a volunteer curator here at the museum. Having invented, really, the Fresnel lens, with that came another problem as to how are you going to manoeuvre this, this great big weight? Yes, that's true. So they came up with the idea of floating it in mercury. And in that optic there, we have 25 pints thereabouts of mercury. And uh, that I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to imagine that lined up on a bar, 25 pints of mercury. <laughs> well, you wouldn't carry it very far. No. The mercury bath had a twofold advantage. It could carry more weight and turn it more efficiently. Faster rotation allowed flash patterns to speed up and lighthouses could be recognized far more quickly. Exposure to mercury can cause serious health problems, but under laboratory conditions at Aberdeen University, I'm getting a closer look at what makes it so special. So tell me a little bit about the properties of mercury. It's a bit of a unique metal, isn't it? Yeah, it's you know, nearly 14 times you know, as dense as water. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. There's, there's a mass to that. You can feel the momentum as you move it. I mean, it, oh, that is weird, because it's so heavy, but it's a liquid. That is so odd. So as we're pouring it, we will have to be careful um, and do it quite slowly, just so it doesn't break the bottom of the beaker too. Is the way. But its density was only one advantage of this fascinating material. Another thing that was crucially important for lighthouses was the fact that it was virtually frictionless. Is that, is that true? Um, what, what, what makes mercury, what gives mercury that kind of character? Yeah, so, first of all, it's a liquid, so there's always going to be the less sort of kind of friction. Um, and it's also got a really high surface tension as well. Time to compare mercury to water. So, whichever is most dense, sink. So there we go. The golf ball is denser than water. Yeah. I'll still pellet here. <laughs> Sinks like a stone. But how do they behave in mercury? <laughs> it's so weird. That is so odd. Try push it down as well. And... Try push it down? Yeah, of course. Go for it. And then I'm not going to let go of it, but it wants to, it just pops straight back up. Boy. And now for the same test with the steel pellet. Oh, wow. It's just bobbing away. Yeah. Like a toy boat on a lake. It's quite interesting to see a metal supported by another metal. You can imagine scaling this up to the size of the those mercury troughs they had in the lighthouses, and you could start to understand how they could support tons of weight of that glass on those lenses yeah. above. But mercury is toxic, and interacting with it was another occupational hazard for lighthouse keepers in a difficult and dangerous job. <laughs> 